The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And Velveeta, you know, helps supply important food values from milk and is as digestible as milk itself. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical hot dishes. Tomorrow... Get Velveeta, the cheese food of craft quality. Well, for a long time now, the great Gildersleeve's doorbell has been ringing every evening at the same time. And Marjorie rushes to the door with the same eager anticipation to greet the same young man. Hi, you Marge. And this gets the same reaction from the great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hi, Leroy. Hello, Bronco. Hi. I brought the records, Marge. Oh, wonderful. Well, come on, Leroy. Let's you and I go into the dining room. Gosh, why do we have to leave the room every time Bronco comes over? Leroy. Oh, you don't have to leave, Mr. Gildersleeve. We're just going to play some records. Bronco got a new album, Romeo and Juliet. It's the opera. Well, good. I don't think you care for opera, do you, Unky? No. I do. <laughs> Leroy, you don't even know what it's about. The heck I don't. It's about love. <laughs> Young man, come into the dining room. Okay. Close those doors. I want to have a little talk with you. What did I do? Uh, Leroy, why do I always have to drag you out of the parlor when Bronco comes to see Marjorie? Gosh, why do they always want to be alone? Well, you heard them. They want to play Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. He's going to be Romeo and she'll be Juliet. That love stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be silly, Leroy. Bronco and Marjorie are not in love. Ha! <laughs> you ought to see her diary. Young man, have you been reading Marjorie's diary? Well, she left it open on her desk. Dear diary, Bronco just left and my heart left with him. <laughs> Leroy, I don't want to know what's in it. And you know how she signs off, Unc? No, and I don't... How does she? <laughs> Good night, my one and only. <laughs> one and only. Well, all young girls write things like that in their diaries. Excuse me, Miss Gill, please. Oh, am I in your way, Bernie? No, just want to get one of these plates. Miss Marjorie wants me to fix sandwiches again. Well, fine. <laughs> I don't know why they want sandwiches. They never eat them. They don't? I can't understand a big, hungry-looking fellow like Bronco not eating. Well, that's love, Mr. Gillsleeve. <laughs> now, Bertie? <laughs> oh, when people are in love, they don't eat. And them two don't eat, so they're in love. <laughs> Bertie, that doesn't mean a thing. No, sir. And when Miss Margie don't see any other young man except Mr. Bronco, it don't mean a thing. Well... And when he rings that bell every night and she breaks her neck to get to the door, it don't mean a thing. Bertie? When every other word is Bronco this and Bronco that, you know what it means, Miss Gilsey? Well, Bertie... That's right, it don't mean a thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it might mean something at that. <laughs> Good morning, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Give me a cup of coffee, Peavy. Very well, well. Trying to wake up this morning, are you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, I am a little sleepy. Peavy, how many nights a week should a young man call on his girlfriend? Well, I'd say that's your business, as long as you don't neglect the water department. <laughs> what? 
And don't fall asleep at the faucet. <laughs> Peavy, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Marjorie's boyfriend. Oh, oh. Bronco Thompson. I've suddenly realized, Peavy, that Marjorie is going steady. You don't say. Yeah. And I don't think she should confine herself to one boyfriend. Well, you may have something there. I know when I was a young man, I didn't confine myself to one girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you didn't. No, sir. One Sunday afternoon, I'd sit in the parlor with one girl, and the next Sunday afternoon, I'd be sitting in the parlor with another girl, perhaps way at the other end of town. Oh? Uh -huh. You're really living, eh, Peavy? Yes, indeed. Come Sunday afternoon, you know what I had on my knee, Mr. Gildersleeve? On your knee? A banjo. A ba... Oh, friend. <laughs> And whenever things started getting serious, I'd strike up a tune. Uh, My father always told me to beware of entanglements and play the field. That's not a bad idea, Peavy. I think Marjorie should do the same thing. Scatter her dates around a little. That's what I used to do. One Sunday afternoon, I'd sit in the parlor you with You my... told me, Peavy. I didn't tell you everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, pardon me, Mr. Gildersleeve. That's... Looks like young Marshal Bullard pulling up in his father's Cadillac. Marshal Bullard? Say, he must be home from school for the holidays. Mm, seems so. He was in this morning, left in order. Let's see if I have everything for him. Huh? Shaving lotion, pipe cleaners, nail buffer. Nail buffer? <laughs> that sounds like Marshal Bullard, all right. Gets more like his father every day. Junior stuffed shirt. I thought you rather liked young Marshal. He used to call on Marjorie, as I recall. Well, he used to run back and forth across the street. What a pest. He hasn't had a date with Marjorie since he went to Harvard. And see, maybe that's an idea. Well, hello, Marshall. Welcome back to Summerfield. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Back for the holidays? Yes. Uh, does uh, Marjorie know you're in town? Well... You'll have to drop across the street and see us. All of us. Soon. Tonight, maybe. My, my. Well, <laughs> I'd like to, but I just got home, and of course I'd like to see Marjorie. Good. I was just telling Peavy how much you and Marjorie used to see each other, and how our whole family has missed having you around. Wasn't I, Peavy? Well, now I would... Peavy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Welcome home, Marshall. <laughs> Marjorie? Yes, Unky? Isn't it about time you powdered your little nose and prettied up a bit? Bronco thinks I'm pretty. Yes. Besides, it isn't time for him to come over yet. Well, one of your other bows might drop over. Unky, I don't have any other bow and you know it. You might have a secret admirer. Marshall Bullard's in town. Marshall Bullard? Uh-huh. I saw him today in Peavy's and they said he might uh, drop over tonight. Uncle Mord, what have you been up to? Oh, Marjorie, don't you get excited. He used to come over a lot before he went to Harvard. But I have a date with Bronco. Well, you and Bronco just sit around and listen to records. Why can't the three of you sit around and listen to records? Honestly, Uncle Moore, I'm not going to the door for Marshall Bullard. You answer it. All right, but you be nice to him, Marjorie. Well, come in, Marshall. Marshall? Oh, Bronco. <laughs> hey, come in. <laughs> Did I say Marshall? Slip of the tongue. <laughs> oh, hi, Marge. Hello, Bronco. I'm a little early. Did I surprise you? I thought it was somebody else. Somebody else? Who else would it be? Well, uh, you see, Bronco, Marjorie's a pretty popular girl, and... Uh, <laughs> pardon me. I'm the doorman tonight. <laughs> well, come in, Marshal. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. Who's this Marshal? Well, Bronco, he's just home from Harvard, and Harvard? Be... Marjorie, how nice to see you. Oh, hello, Marshal. Here, let me look at you. Why, you're even prettier than when I left for school. Oh, Marshal. <laughs> and can this be Leroy? <laughs> oh, my. My, how you've grown. I'm not Leroy. Marshal, this is Bronco Thompson. Oh. Bronco, this is Marshal Bullard. Yes, Marshal lives across the street. He and Marjorie sort of uh, grew up together. Oh, ho! How do you do, Bronco? Hello, Bullard. Here, let me take your coat and gloves, Marshal. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, real pigskin. <laughs> Marjorie, I thought we might take a spin in the Cadillac tonight. It's a much sweeter job than the one we used to run around in. Well, Marshal. Oh, it seems like old times to be in this living room again. Oh, it was awfully nice of you folks to invite me over tonight. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Uh, so soon, Bronco? Bronco, you're not leaving. Well, I wasn't exactly invited over. I just dropped in. 
As usual. No need to leave, Bronco. Oh, of course not, old man. All three of us can take a drive in the cab. No, thanks. I have things to do. Oh, Bronco, please don't go. I think I'd better... Good night, Marge. Good night. Well, uh, perhaps you can come over tomorrow night, Bronco. You're welcome any time, and so is Marshall. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night. Uh, good night. Marjorie, uh, come inside with me now. You left Marshall in the parlor. Uncle Mort, look what you've done. What? Now Bronco's all upset. He's not upset. <laughs> well, I guess he is a little upset. <laughs> Haven't seen him around for two nights in a row. You might ask Uncle Mort about that, Leroy. No, my dear. Dear diary, Bronco didn't call tonight, and am I blue? Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie, come away from the window. She's watching for Bronco. This is the time he used to show up. In the good old days. Uh, yes. Come over and sit down by your old uncle, my dear. I haven't the slightest desire to sit by you, Uncle Mort. I'll never forgive you for inviting Marshall Bullard over. Marjorie, I was only doing what I thought was best for you. Besides, this should be good for Bronco. There's nothing like competition to fire up a suitor. And if I know Bronco... Hey, Marge! That's Bronco's car. Oh, it is? It is. It's Bronco. Well, what did I tell you, Marjorie? I knew he'd come back. Oh, Unky, at last. Yeah. I'll let him in, Marjorie. No, I'll let him in. Yeah, I'll do it. Hello, Bronco. Hi, Marge. Well, Bronco, come in. No, thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll just stand here in the doorway and say what I have to say. What? Bronco, come on in. Don't be silly. I'm not being silly, Marge. I've been thinking this out for three days. I don't think I should take up any more of your time. Bronco, what are you talking about? Marge, you'll be a lot better off going with Marshall Bullard than with me. What? Now, Bronco, there's no reason why both you and Marshall can't see Marjorie. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I'm bowing out. It's for Marjorie's own good. I've got it all figured out on paper. It, on paper? Yes, sir. I drew a line down the middle of the sheet and I put Marshall's qualifications on one side and mine on the other. Oh, for He's got money, a Harvard background, a big car, expensive clothes, and what did I have on my side of the paper? Blank. Blank. <laughs> Bronco Thompson, you're being ridiculous. Yeah? Guess I am ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. And when I found out you and Marshall were childhood sweethearts, well, I can't break up a beautiful thing like that. I'm no cad, Mr. Gildersleeve. We know that, Bronco. We all think you're a fine boy. Well, he'll be better for Marjorie. What's going on out here? Leroy, you stay out of this. I'll say goodbye now. Bronco! Thanks for everything. But now, let's part with no regrets. But, Bronco... I'll just walk off into the fog. <laughs> Mort, I want to have a talk with you. No, Marjorie. There's no fog out there. What a character. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Remember the saying, a man may work from sun to sun, but a woman's work is never done. Well, you homemakers can remedy that situation when it comes to after-hours snack fixing. Just keep your refrigerator stacked with a two-pound loaf of Kraft's famous cheese food, Velveeta, for good-eating snacks that Dad and the youngsters can fix themselves. They can spread Velveeta on crispy crackers or slice it thick for hearty sandwiches that are good cold and extra special good toasted to a bubbling gold. But no matter how they fix swell-tasting Velveeta, they'll be mighty pleased with its grand, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And you'll be pleased because Velveeta is good for the folks. You see, Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk. For instance, it helps supply protein for strong muscles, 
minerals that help build sound teeth and bones, vitamins needed for normal growth. And you know, Velveeta snacks are perfect any time because this cheese food is as digestible as milk itself. So for snacks that provide Brad and the youngsters with wholesome good eating and provide you, Mother, with a little extra time, keep stocked with a two-pound loaf of Velveeta. Just be sure you get the cheese food of top quality when you buy. Genuine Velveeta, made only by Kraft. Well, the great Gildersleeve didn't like the idea of his niece Marjorie going steady with Bronco Thompson. So he invited Marshall Bullard over to give Bronco a little competition. How's it working out? It isn't. Uh, isn't Marjorie having any dinner, Bertie? No, sir. Have another hot biscuit, Leroy? Yeah, I'll take those two that are stuck together. <laughs> Gosh, imagine Marge not eating dinner for two nights. Yeah, I don't know what to do about that girl. No, sir. I don't know how she does it. She must be sneaking crackers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Leroy, I'll handle this thing. Maybe she's living on love. Never mind. <laughs> I did what I thought was best, Bertie. A girl owes it to herself to look around a little. Yes, sir. I didn't know Bronco would act this way, run off like a scared jackrabbit the minute a Harvard boy in a Cadillac came around. No, sir. After all, I'm not the smartest man in the world, Bertie. No, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Where do you suppose Bronco disappeared to, Unc? You think he joined the Foreign Legion? I doubt that, Leroy. The way he acted, I doubt if he has enough gumption to join anything. Here she comes, Unc. Yeah. Leroy, let's be tactful. Let's pretend we didn't even notice she wasn't here. I get you. Well, hello, my dear. Hi. Hello. Sit down, Marjorie. Perhaps Leroy and I started a little early. Yeah. We didn't even notice you weren't here. Yeah. <laughs> Tactful little fellow. I might have a little dessert. Dessert? Good. Take mine. I wasn't going to eat it anyway. You in love too, Unc? Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> have a date tonight, Marjorie? Yes. Well, anybody we know? Marshall Bullard. <laughs> Oh, Marshall again, eh? Well, that's what you wanted, isn't it, Uncle Morris? Well, no, it isn't, Marjorie. Well, that's what you're going to get. You drove Bronco away, and now you're going to see Marshall Bullard around here until you're as sick of him as I am. Marjorie! Hey, maybe that's Bronco on the phone. I know who it is. Hello? Oh, hello, Marshall. Zeke. Why, of course, Marshall. I'd love to come over any time. The sooner the better. Goodbye. <laughs> that settles it. I've got to get Bronco back in the parlor. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Bronco, come on into my office. I got your phone call, but I didn't want to come to your house. I thought it better if we met down here. Yeah, good idea. Put your little packages on the desk and sit down, my boy. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, where have you been keeping yourself these evenings, Bronco? I've been sitting in the park feeding the pigeons. <laughs> well, don't you think you should be dropping by the house once in a while, my boy? Oh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. No, that's no place for me now. Oh? Well, uh... <clears throat> What would you say if I told you Marshall Bullard has been seeing Marjorie quite often? Well, I'd say, lucky him. <laughs> but doesn't it make you a little jealous? Doesn't it make you want to put up a fight? Ask for a date, maybe? Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm doing what I think is best for Marjorie. Oh, brother, we're right back where we started. <laughs> Marshall has a lot more to offer Marjorie than I have, and all I'm interested in is her happiness. Yes. Uh, by the way, you left all your record albums in the parlor. Don't you think you should drop by and pick them up? No use letting Marshall and Marjorie play uh, Romeo and Juliet. I'd like Marjorie to have my records. For old Lang Syne. For old Lang <laughs> I give up. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, think it over, Bronco. Remember, faint heart near one fair lady. No, sir. 
but a Cadillac and a Harvard education can do it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Say, the boy left his packages here. Popcorn. Must be for the pigeons. What's this book? Life in a Monastery. Uh. Anybody home? Oh, come in, Judge. Good morning, Gildy. Wasn't that Bronco I saw going down the hall? Well, it could have been, Judge. What are you reading, Gildy? Yeah. Well, life in a monastery. Are you thinking of donning the cloth? <laughs> All right, Judge. Put the book down. It belongs to Bronco. Oh, poor fellow. From what you've told me, the boy probably considers himself a martyr. I suppose so. He's completely withdrawn from the field, and poor little Marjorie is just eating her heart out. Too bad. Doesn't Bronco know how Marjorie feels about him? How can he, Judge? He won't even come near her. I tried to make him jealous so he'd show Marjorie a little fight, but nothing happened. He just blinked his eyes and looked at me like a sick chicken. Gildy, why didn't you come right out and tell Bronco that Marjorie prefers him to Marshal Bullivant? Well... Bronco's been belittling himself. But if he knew that Marjorie's happiness depended on him, he'd be over there in a jiffy. Say, I believe he would at that. Then you can leave everything up to Marjorie. A woman can't hide her true feelings, Gildy. I know. Oh. <laughs> By George Horace, that's a prize-winning idea. I'm glad you thought of it. Thank you, Gildy. Yes, sir. And here's your prize, Judge. Popcorn? For me? <laughs> no, the popcorn's for the pigeons. You get to eat the bag, you old goat. <laughs> I feel better already, Judge. <laughs> you know, I'm certainly glad you see it my way at last, Bronco. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, all I've been thinking about is Marjorie's happiness. But if she isn't happy with Marshall around, then he shouldn't be around. Yeah, that's the spirit, Bronco. I'm the fellow who should be around. You said it. Why, only this morning, Marjorie said she was sick of seeing Marshall. Is that so? Yeah. You'll see it with your own eyes when we get in the house. A woman can't hide her true feelings, you know. Well, I don't know much about that. Marjorie's the only woman I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> They'll be in the parlor. Let's go right in. All right. I know three's a crowd, but if Marjorie doesn't like the fella, I feel like crowding somebody. Yeah, that's the spirit. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, uh, hello, Marshall. Guess who's with me, Marjorie? Hiya, Marge. Well, I haven't seen you in quite a while, Mr. Bronco Thompson. <laughs> Not very enthusiastic. Oh, I've been around. Hello, Bullard. Well, hello. Uh, Bronco's been pretty busy. <laughs> oh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, nice to see Bronco again. We missed him, haven't we, Marjorie? Have we? Must be a window from someplace. <laughs> what have you been doing, Marge? Oh, Marshall and I have been having a glorious time. Oop. Haven't we, Marshall? Oh, yes, we've really been doing the town, as they say. Marshall is so much fun. He is? <laughs> yeah, it's good to have Bronco around again. Of course, it's nice to see Marshall, too. <laughs> Marshall's been so sweet to me, so thoughtful. That's fine. What's she trying to do? Marshall's a perfect dream on the dance floor, Bronco. Well, I guess I'll be going. Oh, he's collapsed again. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute, Bronco. Yes, don't run away, old man. I have things to do. Good night, Marjorie. I hope you'll be very happy. <laughs> Jellyfish. Well, I'll be running along too, Bronco. Just stop in for a minute. Don't leave on my account. Oh, no, I was just telling Marjorie I have another date tonight. You have another date? Why, of course. When you're going with a girl as sweet as Marjorie, you have the nerve to go out with another girl? Why not? Oh, you cad! That did it. There he goes. Marshal Bullard, you're a cad and a bounder. Oh, Bronco! <laughs> Stand aside, girl. Bullard, come outside and defend yourself. Wait a minute. I'm leaving. You bet you are leaving. Now, fellas. Now, hold on, Bronco. Run, Bullard. Come back, you bounder. <laughs> Run, Bullard, run! Ooh, he made it to his front door just in the nick of time. Oh, Anki, isn't Bronco wonderful? Yeah, and Marshall's a bounder, all right. 
You see how he cleared that hedge? <laughs> <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. Lady, if all the menu planning talk you hear about making use of leftovers leaves you a little skeptical, here's an idea that's bound to make you a believer. It's the glorious golden cheese sauce you can make the easy way with Kraft Smooth Melting Cheese Food Velveeta. With this Velveeta sauce, you can positively transform fish or ham or chicken or veal into a main dish that makes a really triumphant second appearance. You see, Velveeta has such a wonderful, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And Velveeta has a lot of fine nourishment, too, the kind you expect from a main dish. To make this easy sauce, just melt one half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Stir in one quarter cup of milk and season. Glamorize your leftovers with this golden good sauce of wholesome Velveeta real soon. Get a two-pound loaf tomorrow, so you'll have plenty for both cooking and snacks. Get genuine Velveeta, the cheese food of craft quality. I think there's somebody at the door, Marjorie. <laughs> Probably Bronco. Oh, I'll let him in, Unky. Well, here we go again. Back to the dining room. Leroy. <laughs> Hello, Marge. Hello, Bronco. Romeo and Juliet. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Bronco. I stopped in at the telegraph office on my way over, and I brought some news for you. News? Oh, what is it? They got the winning title for your song. It's Tug of My Heart. Tug of my heart? Well, good. Thank you, Bronco. Come on, Leroy. Well, Unky, you don't have to go in the dining room. No, you don't have to, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, you know what they say. Two's company. Three's a crowd. And four is a... Well, good night, little children. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Dick Legrand, Dick Crenna, and Gil Stratton. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Good night for me, too. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Ladies, Pab Step, the delicious cheddar cheese food, is offering you a knife of a hundred uses, the Super Slicer. It pairs faster, slices cleaner, removes olives and cherries from bottles in a jiffy. It's the handiest kitchen knife in years. And you can get this knife for only 25 cents and the top label of a round package of delicious Pabstet cheese food or the red arrow from the top of a two-pound Pabstet loaf. Send your Pabstet label and your quarter tonight to Phoenix Pabstet, Box 5239, Chicago 77, Illinois. Please print your return address. Break the Bank, radio's biggest money-paying show, is next on NBC.